Right, today's topic is how the Holy Spirit and in our lives most importantly. So we're going to read in John chapter 14, verse 15, 16, and 17. It says, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. This Jesus in these four chapters, 14 to 17, gives his disciples the last lesson before he leaves. Chapter 13 is the Last Supper. Chapter 18, Jesus is arrested. Here in verse 15, Jesus tells him to keep his commandments. Verse 16, Jesus will ask the Father, who will give you another advocate. The first one they had was Jesus himself. This advocate, the Holy Spirit, will be with them forever. Jesus is leaving. Verse 17, this advocate, the Holy Spirit, here is called the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, the Spirit of Truth. They're not looking for truth. Jesus says he will be in you. And he was. On the evening of Resurrection Sunday, Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Forty-eight days later, the whole believer community received the Holy Spirit. The topic today is who receives the Holy Spirit today. I believe the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That's a big word for meaning everywhere with everybody. The Holy Spirit is God's servant, I believe, who nudges all people when they ponder God and Jesus, coaxing them to consider the truth about God and Jesus, nudging them on a path of discovery. Millions of people take a step or two. Now and again, they move a few steps forward. Satan, of course, tells, tells them to be careful, tells them to lie, whatever they want to believe. Some ignore Satan and push forward. In the parable of the sower, we have three growth stories. As we know, the seed on the path, the word is ignored, and it's a zero. On the shallow ground, the seed germinates and grows quickly. The Holy Spirit is at work, but problems come. Problems were not anticipated. Satan convinces them it's too hard, they die off, and they're gone. Next is the thorny or weedy soil. There we have the worries, riches, and pleasures that interfere. The seed sprouts, grows, and struggles on. I spent about 30 years here, worries, riches, and pleasures. I was here a long time. So was the student or the teacher defective? It was the student. The teacher, the Holy Spirit, is perfect. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, had nothing to work with. I was too occupied to listen and learn. Finally, I started to listen and learn, started to pass the test, got my diploma, and got a job. Now I know if we search for truth and apply it to our lives, the Holy Spirit teaches us and we grow. The Holy Spirit wants to and does teach us all when we show up. A few ch classes here and there only gets us part way. To have a harvest, we need to be passionate to learn all our life and apply it daily, obedient to Jesus. And Harry, what about people who are settled in church? How does the Holy Spirit work with them? Well, I believe it was with them for a while to get them that far. But now they have found what they're looking for. They're not asking any questions anymore. And how can the Holy Spirit give you answers if you're not asking the questions? I believe we have to be passionate. There are There is so much to know about God and Jesus. And if we continue to do that, the Holy Spirit will grow, and the, and our and the born again nature will grow. And before long, we are doing things and sharing, and 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 we're we're producing fruit. Uh, but if we just come part way and settle, that's not a good place. The Holy Spirit has nothing to do, nothing to work with. Mm -hmm. It's already told you a few things. You're in grade five, and that's where you stay. Yeah, it's a scary place to be. That's well said. Thanks a lot for this, Harry. Thank you.